Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, and I'm a professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. In this uh, selected example for differential calculus, we're going to go ahead and prove that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, or from the positive side, if you will, of the square root of x times e to the sine of pi over x is equal to 0. Now, there is a right way uh, and several or a lot of wrong ways to do this problem. Let me illustrate probably the worst way to approach this problem and the most common way to approach this problem. Okay, so the common way that I often see in the most disastrous way is, and I'll write this in red so that you can see that this is not the proper thing to do, is that people will split this limit. Now, it's not that splitting the limit is always a bad thing. It's not necessarily always a bad thing. However, you can only split a limit if both of the sublimits that you split it into exist. So if you take a look at this, when I split this limit like this, while it is true that this guy right here, it approaches zero, this guy, the right limit, uh, doesn't approach anything that we know. Because as x approaches zero, that denominator is approaching zero, which means that this entire fraction is approaching positive infinity. And some people will make the argument, well, wait a second, sine of positive infinity, that's just bouncing back and forth. And it is true. Uh, but they say that it's bounded by one from above and by negative one from below. So really this limit, while it doesn't exist, we know it's between negative one and one. That is called hand waving. That is not a proof. That is basically just saying, uh, it's too inconvenient for me to think outside the box or think critically. So I'll just say that the left limit is approaching zero and the right limit, well, it's some number. But at least I know it's a, a nice clean number, e to the one or e to the negative one or somewhere between. Um, but because the left one is zero, then this must turn into zero. That is not a proof of this. That actually does not work. You cannot split a limit again if one of the limits does not exist. And this one does not exist, so you cannot split your limit this way. The other issue that I commonly see occurs in the actual right way to prove this. So let's go ahead and go back to the uh, problem at hand here and look at the right way to prove this. So I'll write this in green. So the proof, well, the first thing we happen to know is that that sign of pi over x, which I often call the trouble, that's the trouble in this problem, is the fact that as x approaches zero, that denominator's being, becoming zero. So we're getting division by zero. So whenever I see a problem like this, I start looking at the trouble area first, and I say, uh, first of all, that sine of pi over x, well, I happen to know that that is bounded above by one, and bounded below by negative one. I know that. It kind of goes along the same argument somebody might say in the uh, other one here that, that I, I said you can't split the limit. You can't split the limit, but you can prove it this way by saying, listen, I happen to know that the sign is between negative one and one. So therefore, I happen to know that what I'm going to do here is rebuild this function. In other words, I'm going to say, well, e to the sine of pi over x must therefore be between, well, I know sine of pi over x is between negative 1 and 1, so e to the sine is between e to negative 1 and e to the first. And this is where I say a lot of people make a mistake because a lot of people, and I'll write this off to the edge here, because they just memorize how this a proof like this works, they don't think. They see a sign and they say, okay, so e to the sine is between negative one and one. It's not. That is not true at all. It's that sine is between negative one and one. Therefore, e to the sine is between e to the negative one and e to the one, okay? But that provides a nice bound for us. And at this point, we could say, hence, uh, let's see, I'm going to multiply all three sides by the square root of x so I can build back my entire function here. So square root of x times e to the negative 1 must be less than the square, or equal to, the square root of x times e to the sine of pi over x, which must therefore be less than or equal to e to the first times the square root of x. Now where does this get us? Well, since the limit... 
as x approaches 0 from the right of e to the negative 1 root x. That right there I happen to know equals 0. I also happen to know that the right-hand function has a limit as x approaches 0 from the right that e to the first root x also approaches 0. Well, if the limit from uh, of the left hand, the lower function, is approaching 0, as x is approaching 0 from the right, and the rightmost function here is also approaching 0, as x is approaching 0 from the right, that means that the center or the bounded function must also approach 0. It's being squeezed, and this is by the squeeze theorem, by the squeeze theorem. I'll write this in here. There we go. The limit as x approaches 0 from above uh, of the square root of x e to the sine of pi over x must therefore be 0. That is the proof of it. There's, there's nothing else to that proof. Oh, that's...